It's been a while since my last video on weird prototype tanks, which is a shame, since this kind of video is a lot of fun to make. Looking at all the insane concepts engineers have cooked up is very entertaining, and you don't get a lot of heated opinions like you do with tanks that saw combat. They're kind of lighthearted, if that makes sense. If you guys have your own favorite weird tank, go ahead and leave it down in the comments. I might include it in a future video. Before we get started, I'm going to take a second to talk about my sponsor. I have a partnership with Apex Gaming, a company that makes pre-built gaming computers. If you're looking to upgrade, you should definitely check them out. Link is in the description and comments. Anyway, let's get started. First, there's a Soviet infantry fighting vehicle, Object 19. If you're thinking that it looks like a Goblin of 5 BMP, that's because it kind of is. It was one of several designs submitted for the BMP program. The strange wheel come track design wasn't an entirely novel concept in itself, as the Swedish L-30 and some other tanks had used it before, but it is strange that a Cold War vehicle would try to use such an archaic concept. The idea was that it would only use wheels on road, but would lower the tracks when going over rough terrain. It was also amphibious, being propelled by a pair of water jets. The overall layout is a bit different compared to Object 765, the proposal that would eventually become the BMP-1. On the 19, the driver and commander sat side by side in the front, with two dismounts behind them. The gunner was the only one in the turret, like on the 765, with four more dismounts in the back next to the engine. It was quite fast on road, with a top speed of around 80 km per hour. Unfortunately, as mentioned earlier, this cool design was passed out for the 765. The track system was simply too complex for not enough benefit, plus the 765 was cheaper and able to carry more dismounts. Moving on, we're going to be talking about a tank that is pretty well known but also misunderstood. This is the High Mobility and Agility Testbed, also known as the HIMAG. Created in 1976 by the National Water Lift Company, the HIMAG was what is known as a Variable Parameter Testbed. If you don't know what that is, it's a vehicle whose configuration could change drastically, so it could test a wide variety of conditions. A lot of people think it was meant to replace the M551 Sheridan, but that's not the case. That was the RDFLT's job. The HIMAG's job was to test things like dodging tank fire, or the use of automatic cannons. The HIMAG's weight could vary from 30 to 39 metric tons, with the diesel engine having ratings of 1,000, 1,250, and 1,500 horsepower. At around 96 km per hour, maximum speed was staggering. Acceleration was also stellar, taking only 7.8 seconds to reach 48 km per hour. The HIMAG also used the XM2 Sim 4 automatic cannon, which could fire in excess of one round per second. Unlike its companion vehicle, the HSTVL, the HIMAG's carousel was located in a mechanism known as the gun cradle, meaning that as the gun moved, so did the carousel. It also meant that the HIMAG only carried six rounds in total. So no, it probably wouldn't be very good in War Thunder. The HIMAG was also used to test startle, basically a radar tracking and sighting system. If you're familiar with the Chrysanthema, it was a bit like that. Next up, this vehicle isn't strictly speaking a prototype, but it's simply too strange to pass up. Everyone is familiar with the ubiquitous M4 Sherman medium tank, but you've probably seen this picture and thought, what in God's name is going on? No, this isn't some mechanized praying mantis, it's actually an engineering vehicle. The device coming out of the front is called a T8 mine exploder, and you can probably already guess what it was supposed to do. As the M4's dry sprocket turned, the pincers in front would stab the ground, occasionally striking and detonating mines. The theory was that the pincers wouldn't be damaged, because some internal springs would absorb the impact. Sounded great theoretically, but didn't work out so well in practice. While we're on the topic of mine exploders, check out this one, the T-15. It reminds me a lot of a lifted truck. The idea was that by strengthening all the components and elevating the hull, the M4 could simply drive across minefields with no damage. For vulnerable areas like the bottom of the hull, extra armor was added on, and the suspension was also reinforced. Surprisingly, it kind of worked, but with the end of World War II, there was simply no need for it. And finally, we'll end the episode with an Irish tank, one called the Headless Coachman. In the late 50s to early 60s, Ireland bought some tanks from Great Britain. More specifically, they bought eight Comet cruiser tanks. This was about all they could afford, so what happened next is quite unfortunate. One of the Comets suffered a fire so severe that it completely destroyed the turret. Not wanting to put a perfectly good hole to waste, they started using it to transport range targets. Though someone eventually had a rather novel idea. In place of the turret, they would instead mount a 90mm recoilless rifle. It was a relatively simple modification, with only one major change being needed. For the driver and bow gunner, their positions had to be rearranged, otherwise they could be injured by backblast. Tests proved the concept to be successful, so further plans were drawn up, but a lack of funds meant they couldn't be pursued. And that wraps up the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one.